Thanks for watching my video. Um, I'm just going to show you how to make these buckles. So apparently the dog's joining me. Uh, this is the Tamarack Jacket by Grainline Studio. It is uh, normally attached, closed up by hook and eye fasteners or you can get steps or buttons and I wasn't sure once I'd made mine because it was quilted. Um, these are Carolyn Friedlander fabrics. I didn't really think that it was going to look right. I was told by people on Instagram that I should have large fasteners, large buttons. And then my husband said, why don't you make it like a gamberson? And I was like, what's a gamberson? And he said, it's a quilted jacket that goes over armour and you see them a lot in kind of fantasy um, TV programmes. So I thought about how I could make it without um, having to buckle them up every time because that would be kind of annoying. And so these just snap magnetically. So I'm going to show you how I made these because these are just made out of vinyl um, just and how to attach them. They're hand sewn on uh, which kind of goes in with the feel of this jacket because the welt pocket pockets had some hand sewing. The binding was hand sewn on my particular jacket on the inside so it didn't feel like a hardship to hand sew something else. Uh, so it does need, you do need a bit of vinyl, you need as many um, mag snaps as you are going to have fasteners, same for buckles, and you also need some upholstery thread, some nice thick thread that matches the colour of the vinyl. You also need to use the templates that I've provided you, um, if you look in the description below or in my blog post you should be able to download those. Alright, so I'm going to get on with the tutorial. So to make these buckle fasteners you will need a few supplies. You will need to trace the templates that I've provided onto template plastic or something else that's clear and easy to draw around when you cut it out. Um, this is like a heavy duty template plastic that I've just got a scrap of so I just draw it on with a permanent marker because I can put the paper underneath, trace it all out and then just cut it out with scissors. And then you'll have two templates that look like this. So you'll have these. You obviously need some vinyl or some leather. I'm using Beacon Fabri-Tac glue. My uh, tube is a little bit worse for wear, but that's the best one I've found. I also tried Fabric Fusion uh, glue, but that didn't work so well. Um, so we've already mentioned the scissors. You'll also want a permanent marker. Um, again, not just for tracing, but you might want it to tidy up some of the edges later on. Uh, the buckles that I'm using are from Emmeline Bags. They're these ones here and they're three quarters of an inch or 18 millimeters and they come in a pack of four. Also from Emmeline I made sure I had enough of these magnetic snaps and these are the little tiny ones. Uh, the size on those ones are, are 9 sixteenths of an inch or 14 millimeters and they come two in a packet. So this is just one because you get a male side, a female side and then two backing plates with those as well. You also need a, an awl for putting your little sewing holes into it and also to make the holes for the buckle you need like a, I don't even know what the proper name is for this but it came with my buttonhole cutter it's like the small one that you can, it's a little punch, a little tiny circle punch um, which we'll use to take those um, little holes out for the buckle and the wooden block that comes with that set so I kind of use all of that together and you'll also need something round about the size of a quarter or maybe a UK penny, just give it a measure. Uh, this is just short of an inch, it's probably seven eighths of an inch um, diameter. So something around that kind of size because what we need it to be is a little bit bigger than your uh, magnetic snaps so we can put that into a piece of vinyl that size and then make that something you can sew on. You'll also just need a, just a pen and a ruler as well because we need to make sure that those holes are put into that buckle at regular intervals. So let's move everything out of the way. First off we'll need to draw on the back of the vinyl all the pieces that we need. Oh, I also have these sew tights which are like magnets. Um, well they are magnets, so they're not like magnets and they are good for holding those gluey bits together while they dry and they don't leave little dents like the clips do. I found that Wonder Clips, if you glue vinyl, you can never get those dents out. So, got some of them, just in case. Alright, now this is just uh, craft vinyl. Uh, I got it from a local store. I don't know its weight or anything like that, but it kind of, it's pretty flexible. It's not massively thick, which is good really because we do need to be able to cut that. 
and we need to be able to um, poke holes in it and all of that stuff. Okay, so we need to make one of these, two of these, and we're also going to draw around this quarter twice too. So we'll have five pieces in total. I'm just going to use a normal regular pen. You can use whatever you like, but you're not going to see this really. So, And if you do see it, we're going to colour it in with the marker pen anyhow. So let's draw around here. And this is pair buckle. So if you're making a whole bunch of these, uh, you might want to draw all of them out at the same time. Okay, so that's all cut out. I'm just going to take my scissors and cut this out. I'm actually just using, I have multi-purpose scissors. These started off as fabric scissors and then I moved them to being my usual paper scissors. Uh, so I don't usually use these for fabric anymore, but they do work very well for vinyl. And you can use your fabric scissors for vinyl because it's technically a fabric. Hopefully that won't make too many people mad. <laughs> Right, we're done with the vinyl. So now we have our pieces cut out. We need to glue these two pieces together, wrong sides together, with the fabric tack. And you might find that once you glue them together that they don't they don't quite match up. That's both that's a combination of a few things. Um, it's a combination of my templates being hand drawn, so it won't be perfectly accurate. Also, when you trace them out, you you lose a little bit of the original shape, and then when you cut them out, you lose a, a bit more as well. So I found this glue can be quite difficult to get out. But we're going to try and put a decent amount round the edges, and then squish it together. Here we go. So I'm not going right up to the edge because I'm going to push it from the middle. I'm just going to put it on one half. And then we're going to try and match them up as best as we possibly can. So you'll see what I mean about how it's kind of doesn't quite match up. That's okay, we're going to fix that once it's dry. So I'm going to smooth all of that out. If you do get a bit of glue on one of the sides, that can be the back. So don't worry about that. So we're just going to set that to one side for a little bit. Next thing we're going to do is look at this. We're going to find that in between those two inner points. We're going to find the middle. I'm just eyeballing it because I think it's pretty easy when it's something small. And we're just going to punch that hole. And you can just do that by pressing into it against the wooden block. And it punches a hole in there for you. The next thing we're going to do is take a buckle and we're going to squish these sides down to fit through one of the halves of the buckle. We're going to put that little uh, prong of the buckle through that hole that we've just made and then we're going to squish the other half down into the other side. So what we're doing there is we're sandwiching the buckle in between these two pieces. So it'll look like this. Your prong sticking out the middle now. And then what we'll eventually be doing is folding those two pieces together. But first we need to put one of the magnets into this side here. And that should be the outie, the male side of the mag snap. So to do that, what I'm going to do is get my ruler. You could use a quilting ruler for this, you might find it a little bit easier. Um, I know that my middle is kind of roughly where the um, prong is. I'm just going to use my block there just to give it a bit of something to rest on. So we're going to look at roughly 7 eighths of an inch from that prong. I'm just going to make a little dot. there and make sure that we're putting it in the right side so actually mine's on the wrong side so I'm glad I checked you want to be doing it on the back side so not this front side where you've got the curve that's the front so that's the top it's this bottom piece okay so most buckles have like a curved edge so you know where the top is so this is actually where I want to be so let's go seven eighths of an inch again good practice 
and it's in line with the middle because I'm using the little hole that we made as my guide. There. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use the holes on the backing plate so we know where we're going to be putting those prongs. I am going to use the block. This kind of gets a bit awkward because of the buckle. I'm kind of going to fold it all out the way. But you're just going to line that duct line that dot in the middle of the circle that's in on the backing plate and then you're going to mark the lines either side and these are the lines we're going to cut down so it'll look like this so now you can either stick a little pair of scissors in there I'm actually just going to use the buttonhole there, just the corner of it uh, just to cut a little slit doesn't have to be big, in fact it's better if it's small in those little lines which should now go all the way through to the back now we're going to grab our mag snap just check one more time, make sure it's in the right place the buckle should be, the prong should be pointing up so it's the back and it is the right one so we're going to put it through from the outside through those little holes that you just made flip it over, notice how we're not going through both layers put the backing disc on and then fold those prongs back, you can probably, you might need pliers for this, depends on how uh, soft the metal is on your um, mag snap, but it'll look like this and now we're ready to do the gluing part on this like we did with the strap, so we're going to grab our faithful Fabri-Tac and glue over the back of that mag snap. You won't be able to get right up against the buckle there so just do what you can but you do want to make sure you get all of those edges otherwise you'll have to glue them again. So make sure you get at least up to that where those lines start to go into the middle. If you can get the glue all the way up to there and make like a little flap that will be great. So we're going to glue those wrong sides together like this. And this is where that magnet um, thing comes into use because if you hide your wonder clips here it might just dent the uh, vinyl and it will just make it look a little bit ugly. It's kind of difficult when there's actually ma metal in, in this now. Ooh, see? <laughs> you could put two on if you wanted, one on the top, one on the bottom. But I know there isn't a whole lot of glue here. So I'm just going to leave that to dry. And then while that's drying, we'll get on with making the strap part for here. So once the glue is dry, or pretty close to being dry, I don't think mine's 100% dry right now, you're just going to grab your scissors again and then you're just going to neaten up those edges. Don't go too crazy because you need them to match if you're making a few of these. Uh, but you're just going to cut off any bit irregular bits where it doesn't match. And then you're also going to flip it over and just check for them on the back as well. Because there will be some. <laughs> Once you're reasonably happy with that, what you're going to do is grab your permanent marker and just colour in the edges just to hide any little white fibres because this is especially visible on vinyl. Um, but it is actually a technique that they use in leather work just to hide that um, sort of natural hide look when you've got coloured leather. So you're just going to work your way around there. Doing this you might find some of the edges aren't quite stuck like I have. So I'm just going to go and add a little bit more glue on that once I've done this. But it's nearly there. So you're going to need your punch again. I'm just going to use a normal pen. Okay, starting from the point we're going to go three quarters of an inch from that point, make a little dot, and then from there we're going to make another three more and we're going to do them half an inch apart. So I don't know how well you can see that, but I have four little dots. Here you go, it kind of shines. And now I'm going to get my ruler out of the way, go up my punch, and I'm going to punch a hole in each one of those little dots. 
Most of these are decorative because really we're only going to be using the last one. But it gives the illusion of a proper buckle that's functional, even when it's fake. Ta da! Alright, so now this is dry, we can oops, we can trim this down like we did before. You might not be able to trim it quite so much because that buckle will get in the way. We can do a little bit of cleaning up. And then you're going to tidy up the edge like you did before. Mark a pen. And then once you've done that, it's time to put this part through the buckle too. So um, we're only using the fourth hole. The others are decorative to make it look like it's a real buckle. Okay, so this is going to be on the top. So we're going to go through. The top is the bit with the slot for this to rest on, if you have one. You're going to go through there. I'm going to put the prong through the fourth hole so it slides into its little rest and then the rest of this tail just gets tucked underneath that bar. And that part is pretty much done. But what we're going to also do to make stitching it a little bit easier because we do need to sew these by hand is we're going to take the awl and we're going to mark some stitching um, on there. I am using the wooden block because I found that kind of handy for the stitch too but I'm just sort of evenly spacing out some little stitch marks there I would say about an eighth of an inch from the edge. Now you don't have to go too crazy because this is quite soft. If you don't want to do this part you could just make sure you've got a thimble on and a uh, hand sew without the holes. I'm just going to work my way around here. If these holes aren't perfect it's not a big deal because we're going to back stitch them so you're not going to really be able to tell once the thread's in there. So that's how I've done this one. I've got holes all the way around the outside edge there and then before it gets to the buckle when it starts to get narrow here I've put some more holes across so it goes all the way around. Now for the bottom, I'm actually, because of the buckle getting in the way, I'm not going to be able to do a go across. So I'm just going to put like a U shape on there. So when we, when we sew it on, what we'll do is we'll sew it around one way and then we'll sew it back again. Just to reinforce it. I'd say these holes are about an eighth of an inch apart as well, give or take. You kind of get to... After a while you visualise measurements, so they're not always entirely accurate, but they're close enough. Okay. And I'm getting right up to where that buckle is, so I've gone all the way around there. They're not huge on the back, it's just going to give us a little bit of extra support. So we save our fingers a little bit. So now once you've got your buckle you'll also need two circles. One of them will just leave it as it is. The other one, we're going to grab the block, the awl, and this is just so that it gives you a guide where you're going to put your stitches. And you're just going to try and make evenly spaced holes in the circle. And they're about an eighth of an inch apart, and maybe an eighth of an inch from the edge. We, we're not going to do the back because it's going to be hard to go all the way through the jacket and then all the way through... Um, the two bits of vinyl and have the holes match up exactly. Okay, so that's my circle. So now we need to get these on the jacket. And you'll want an upholstery thread or a nice thick thread for this. I'm using Cuts and Clark. Um, this I just got from Michaels, it's just an upholstery thread and I'm going to hand sew everything on. Which I hand sewed the binding on this jacket so it doesn't feel like such a hardship to have to hand sew the fasteners on. And I've got four of these. Actually, before we get going with the jacket, what we want to do first is do a bit of decorative stitching on the buckle. This won't um, have any bearing on it attaching to the jacket. 
because um, we're going to use the magnet but we are going to put some stitches around the piece with the magnet in just to keep those two bits together because of course the um, prongs on the magnet snap don't go all the way through. I'm going to cut a little piece of this upholstery thread. I'm using a milliner's needle because it's got a nice big eye on it because this is quite thick and it's quite kind of wiry and I found the easiest way to knot this stuff is actually just to find the end and literally just knot it rather than doing any special knots and I just need to do one because it's thick all right so we're going to start a running stitch from one of the one one of the ends so you can start this side or this side doesn't really matter we're going to pull up from the bottom and the bottom is the one with the mag snap and we're going to come up from one hole go into the next one pull it through you can use a thimble for this as well if you want because your fingers do get a bit tired and then I'm going to come up through the next hole so you've got a gap between the stitches like a standard running stitch but the reason for this is so that it stays neat on both sides because it'll look the same on the front and the back if we were doing back stitch you'd end up with some overlapping on the back we want um, because this is going to be kind of visible on both sides you want it to look neat on both sides so we'll work our way around to the other side try not to get that wrapped around too much and those holes do make it a bit easier on your fingers as well as giving you something to aim for um, it's not as so hard as if you were trying to push the needle through the vinyl without any kind of impression in there when you sew on the jacket you'll definitely want your thimble if you don't use it for this you'll definitely want it then So I'm going to go into the last hole. If it happens to be that you're coming out of the last hole now, then you will start your back stitch at this process. I actually have one more, so my last stitch is going to come out on the back. But that's okay, because what I'm going to do is make sure that my next stitch comes up here. So what I'm doing now is I'm doing all of the stitches in between those ones we've just done. So you can kind of see on the back a lot easier. I'm out, I've come out of here, and this is what it would look like on the front if you finished here as well. You're going to go into that next hole, and we're going to go the opposite way around. Okay, so now we've got all of the stitches on both sides, but we've still got these two ends to finish off, and I still have this one stitch left. So you are going to go through where the knotted thread came through, and I'll end up on the wrong side but that's okay because I want to do a tiny little stitch on that side whichever side it is that you've come out on so that you come back up and the start and the end of the thread are close by I'm just going to snip that with the scissors and I'm going to actually just put a knot in there and knot that together kind of fiddly to show you that but you have to trust me that I'm putting a knot in I might even double it there we go once you have a nice tight knot you can snip it and so it'll look like this and the knot should be on the inside because that will be the least visible part but it'll still be kind of visible because you'll be flapping it open when you're closing the jacket up so that's why it's important that that looks reasonably neat okay so you'll need to do that for as many buckles as you need I have four of them and now I'll show you the next step okay so this is my jacket um, I have measured in between well I measured where I wanted the first fastener to go like because I know that all of these are going to stay closed at all times so I didn't want it super close to my neck so this is where my first one's going to go and then I got my ruler and I measured between there and where the center will be of the next one at three and a half inches. So that's three and a half inches, that's three and a half inches, and that's three and a half inches. As you can see, I've already kind of started to have a play here. Um, all I've done is I've taken the circle with the holes in it, uh, which isn't that one, and then I used the disc from these, from the fasteners, Put it in the middle, marked either side of the notches, and then I cut them. And then I put the female 
side through. So I'm going to do that for each one of those and then I'm going to go all the way through the jacket. So it looks like this and you're going to put the prongs outwards. As a rough idea for the size of buckles that we have, we're looking at around an inch from the binding for the centre of that. Can you see that? So where the binding ends is another inch there. So it's kind of scary this bit because you do need to put holes in the jacket. So I started off by putting the holes in here, pushing it against there and then feeling where those lumps come through on the other side and then just snipping very slightly with these snips through the backing fabric and then through the batting and then I will eventually get through the front before I put the backing disc on there. Okay, so apparently I forgot to hit the record button. <laughs> but what I did was, I started, like we did with the last piece, I started on the back, pushed it through, and I kind of had to hunt around a little bit to find where that hole was, so you kind of get see the needle starting to poke through, um, and put pressure on the vinyl, and it's, if it's in the wrong place, you can just pull the needle back and try again. And then we're doing the running stitch like we did before. So if you just keep your eye on the back as well, you want that to be reasonably neat if you can help it. I have an odd number of holes, so it's going to be quite fortuitous for me. I'm going to come up through my last hole and then I'm going to keep working my way around. If you have an extra one, you might just need to um, kind of make a little tiny stitch. Or um, if you, so for example, if this hole wasn't here, you might want to kind of make a little tiny stitch next to the last hole before starting the next round. Okay, so we're going to go round again. Just joining up all of those spaces. And again, just you can make sure on the back that you're going in the right place because you can see where the previous stitches have been. It makes it a little bit easier on the second way around. So, that's mine all sewn on there. I just need to repeat the process with the other three and then once we've done that we'll be taking care of the little circle on the other side. That's what my inside looks like. It's not the prettiest but it could be a lot worse if I'd backstitched it. Maybe I'll get better as I go along and add the others. On my jacket now, I've got all my buckles, I've got my um, snaps on this side and actually I've started on this just before I've started filming this section. What I'm going to do now is add that patch of vinyl to the back. So I have got one left that I need to do, which is down here. And the reason why we're adding it is to just cover up that metal so you don't get anything snagged on those prongs. What we're going to do is we're going to take the vinyl, the last, the other vinyl circles that we have without the holes in them. We're going to position it kind of roughly over the back there. We're still hand sewing it with the upholstery thread. I'm just going to take a. Sorry about the dog. I'm just going to take a little kind of edge stitch because I know it's roughly going to be about that distance away on the other side so I can sort of position it and then I'm going to poke my needle through and try and get to the other side. There we go. So you're going all the way through. So we're just going to do some a big stitch like we did before, we're doing running stitch. So we're going to, we know we're going in here just got to keep our eye on the back, especially for the first few stitches, and make sure it's close to the edge. Pull it through. Look for the next hole. And you just keep working your way around. You just have to make sure that you keep shuffling that back piece initially to just cover where your stitches are coming out of, because it does have a bit of flexibility there. Once you've done about half of the way around, you'll be fine. You won't need to worry about that too much. So you'll work it all your way around and then you'll fill those stitches in between just as we did before when we were sewing the other pieces of vinyl. And then that's it. So this is the finished jacket. I don't know really if I would wear it open because it kind of looks kind of weird with the buckles when it's not closed up properly. Um, which is also why I didn't want to put one right high up here around my neck but I might change my mind on that and I might have five fasteners. But that's what it looks like closed. Let me know if you give it a try. I'm at Penny Dog on Instagram or you can leave me a comment below.